I think that first note is a call to spirit. Yeah. It's a call to us as human beings, and there is no other note like it on any musical in the world. As of course, you played the role first, and I am playing it right now. At my tender age of 60, I can say I originated the role of Rafiki in London at The Lion King. How was your audition process? How did you become Rafiki? Well, the first Rafiki. My agent put me up for the role. It was regarded as one of the most important things to happen in the West End at that time. The audition process was interesting in both ways. One, I think, as the mischievous person that I was, I was like, well, after you see me the fifth time, surely that must be enough. I remember the last audition. Yeah, I did that and got it. I didn't know anybody when I arrived. And the whole world was represented there, from across in Brazil, Spain. We had people from the different Car Caribbean islands. Everywhere was there around the table. So my story is a little bit different. Um, what, 18? I get a call, they need to come see me for The Lion King. It took a couple of months. So I would do my finals in school and fly to Joburg. My mum obviously said, you're not doing The Lion King, you need to go to school. My mum still says no. My sister snuck me out to go to Joburg and do the audition. And I got the job the same day. It's very, very special for me to, to play this role. And I think that's why I still love playing it. I work now as the vice chancellor and CEO for the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. I have students that are auditioning for The Lion King. Their response when they see this and they've understood that I was in it is that they see the power of something that I think is so important. Community, our story, the continent and South Africa and the pride I have of that, it must evolve. Yeah. You're that part of that evolution, you know, that circle of life. This is absolutely continual. You and I are the ones that get to see everyone come on stage, but also see everybody watching this happen. Yeah. You say Nancy Moyama, sometimes you'd hear them go, <gasps> but seeing their faces, and especially the kids, the kids oh, always crazy. get my heart. Mm. We've been handing some photos, I think. I have yours here. I'm going to show you one, and then you're going to tell me a story about it. Babe, do you remember this moment? How can I forget this moment? My first reaction is that moment when it comes out of your mouth. I think that first note is a call to spirit. Yeah. It's a call to us as human beings, and there is no other note like it on any musical in the world, yeah. ever. I think it was so much resting on that moment. How was press night? Well, you know, I was sitting next to Elton John, you know, and I think I was a bit dizzy. Yeah. A bit dazed, singing that and Elton John going, you know, I, I loved it. It was oh. just, 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 just uh, sort of <laughs> fainting in a corner. But it brings back the most joyous moment in my career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Jubilee. What made it even more special was it was live around the world and my whole family got to see it. Aye. So my mom was watching it from South Africa yes. with my brothers and <laughs> sisters and nephews and nieces and my whole community. Yeah. My moment is our moment. It's our moment. My mom felt represented. My ancestors felt represented. It was unbelievable. It was scary as well because mm. you're standing there and I'm telling you, it felt like it was like a million people in front of me. But they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. God. It reminds me of the trip that I made to South Africa. Ooh. They flew myself, Lebo and Julie Tamor to South Africa, Joburg, where we met community, where we met the people who were involved in original designs. And I think that moment captures not only Lebo's brilliance and care and seeing and enjoying the mystery of that incredible trip that we made, which stays with me to this day. Being from Africa, you kind of feel like we have a seat at the table. That is such a, a moment for our people. And that's why I love the show for that representation. And also the audience. I mean, from all over the world. Yeah, that. You know, I mean, this is this is where the power rests. Yeah. It's the people, everyone can leave that space being held in some way. But that, that call, you know, it calls us in a way, in a vibrational way to say, we have each other. <laughs> 